In this video, we are going to see about the static Serbius drive which is a type of slip power recovery scheme. The speed of the slip ring induction motor can be controlled by varying the rotor circuit resistance. Basically, there are two types to control the speed of slip ring induction motor. One is the rotor resistance control where the slip power will be wasted in the rotor resistance to control the speed of the slip ring induction motor. Next one is the slip power recovery scheme where this slip power will be returned to the supply itself. So the, here the slip power is recovered so the efficiency will be greater compared to the rotor resistance control. We can achieve slip power recovery either by using Cramer drive or by using Serbius drive. So Cramer drive we have already seen in the previous video. This drive will operate only in subsynchronous speed. It means that speed can be controlled only below the base speed. In Serbius drive it is possible to achieve both subsynchronous as well as supersynchronous speed that is below synchronous speed as well as above synchronous speed and this is the circuit diagram of the Serbius drive we have seen in Cramer drive you will have a diode bridge rectifier here one diode bridge rectifier and one phase control rectifier will be there in Cramer drive so now we have two thyristor converters or two phase control rectifiers in Serbius drive. So since this is a phase control rectifier you can achieve both motoring and regeneration operation with this Serbius drive. When you have a diode bridge rectifier here in Cramer drive you cannot achieve regeneration. There are two configurations to achieve the static Serbius drive. One is called the DC link static Serbius drive. Another one is cycloconverter static Serbius drive. In DC link static Serbius drive, two fa phase control rectifiers will be connected through a DC link. In cycloconverter fed drive, we know what is a cycloconverter. It is a AC to AC converter with option for changing the output frequency. First we will see the DC link static Serbius drive. You have two phase control bridge converters which are connected through the DC link. So this LD helps to remove the ripple or smoothen the ripple. Since both are thyristors there is a possibility to send the power in both directions that is the slip power can be written back to the supply or it can be drawn from the supply also. Both synchronous, subsynchronous and supersynchronous speed control is possible. So first we will see the subsynchronous speed control. So for this uh, operation this bridge one acts as a rectifier that is you have a AC slip power which will be rectified to DC. So how to make this uh, rectif uh, this converter work as rectifier means you make alpha less than 90 degree it will act as a rectifier you will get DC output here. Now this DC is given to this converter which will act as a inverter. So alpha will be greater than 90 degree for this. So you will get AC output here which will be connected uh, to the supply line using a transformer. So here the power flow is slip power goes to this bridge rectifier then to the inverter and again to the transformer and then return to the supply. So this is the power flow direction for some synchronous speed control. For super synchronous operation this bridge 1 acts as an inverter while the bridge 2 acts as a rectifier. It means that it will draw the 
power from the supply and convert this into DC. This is a rectifier. So here you have AC and here DC is there. This DC will be um, again converted into slip power frequency by this inverter. So the power uh, flow diagram is from supply through transformer it will come to bridge 2 then bridge 1 and rotor circuit. So the power flow is from supply to the rotor side. So the advantages of uh, DC link static CERBS drive is that you can control the motor speed continuously 50 percentage above and below the synchronous speed. If you see the disadvantages, natural commutation occurs in phase control rectifier but near synchronous speed the slip value will be very low. So the rotor voltage will also be low. So it is difficult for the thyristors to get commutated naturally. For that we have to go for forced commutation. But thyristor, if you use a forced commutation circuit for thyristor, it will complicate the circuit. And moreover, here we are using thyristor rectifier. In Kramer's drive, we will be using only diode bridge rectifier. So thyristor rectifiers are expensive compared to diode bridge rectifier. And here, the converter rating will be high compared to that of uh, converter used in Kramer drive because here the rating of the converter should be greater than the slip power rating. Next we will see about the cyclo converter static CERBS drive. So here also slip power can flow in both the directions. So cyclo converter is a AC AC converter or AC to AC converter with the possibility to change the frequency. So slip power can flow in either direction. It is called a constant torque drive and speed control below and above synchronous speed is possible with motoring operation and regeneration is also possible. Advantages if we see it is possible to regulate the slip power in both direction without any DC link and current is nearly sinusoidal here. So if current is sinusoidal means torque pulsations will be less and the commutation problem near synchronous speed is completely eliminated in cyclo converter drive. If you see the disadvantages we have more number of devices in cyclo converter so the system is completely complex and expensive. There are four different modes in static surveyors drive. So it is subsynchronous motoring and subsynchronous regeneration. Again you have supersynchronous motoring and supersynchronous regeneration. What is this subsynchronous below synchronous speed and this is supersynchronous is above synchronous speed. So before going to these modes of operation we should know what is air gap power PG. This air gap power gets divided into two parts or this air gap power will be converted into mechanical power which is equal to 1 minus s times pg and the remaining power is called the slip power s times pg. So in slip power recovery scheme you are recovering only this slip power. So let us see what happens to these powers for different modes of operation. Let us see the mode 1 operation first. That is the subsynchronous motoring. Subsynchronous means less than the synchronous speed. So the slip is always positive. So we know the air gap power. Part of the air gap power will be converted into mechanical power. So this is air gap power which is converted into mechanical power. So the remaining power is the slip power 
which is returned back to the supply. So, the total power drawn from the supply will be equal to Pg minus Spg. Pg we are drawing from the supply but Spg we are returning. So, the total power drawn from the supply is 1 minus S into Pg which is equal to the mechanical power developed. Next, we will see the subsynchronous regeneration. So, subsynchronous means slip positive. Regeneration means we are returning the power back to the supply. So, in the previous case motoring, we will be drawing from the supply. Regeneration means we are returning the power back to the supply. So, first the mechanical power direction will change because it is acting as a generator. So, here 1 minus S into Pg is here. So, this is Pg. So, what should be the direction of the slip power? So, if you add the slip power to this one, you will get Pg. So, the direction of slip power is this one. And this power Pg minus S Pg will be returned to the supply. So, this is again equal to the generated power. Next, we will have supersynchronous motoring. So, supersynchronous means greater than synchronous speed, slip will be negative. So, this is motoring operation. So, we will take the power from supply. So, this is air gap power and mechanical power will be slip is negative. So, 1 minus S of minus S will become 1 plus S into Pg. So, here Pg is coming. Here you are getting 1, 1 plus S into Pg. So, the direction of uh, slip power should be we should draw from the supply. So, this direction. So, if you add these two you will get this one. So, the total power drawn from the supply will be equal to Pg plus Spg. So, it is 1 plus S into Pg. Again, we can see this power is equal to mechanical power developed. Next, mode 4 that is supersynchronous regeneration. So, supersynchronous slip is negative. Regeneration means we have to return the power to the supply. So, this will give you the generated power 1 plus S Pg. Out of that Pg will go here. So, remain S Pg should return to the supply. So, that here the equations will balance. So, the total power return to the supply will be Pg plus S Pg or I can write this generated power equal to this power. Now, let us compare all the four modes together so that it will be easy to remember. So, this is subsynchronous motoring, slip is positive. In subsynchronous generation also, slip will be positive. And here you can see from our motoring operation, power is drawn from the supply for generation, power should be returned to the supply. Then, here mechanical power will be developed in motoring operation where it is acts as a generator. So, it is returning to the rotor circuit. Then we have supersynchronous motoring and supersynchronous generation. In both the cases slip will be negative. Again for motoring power is drawn from the supply for generation power should be returned to the supply. The points to remember here are there are two types of slip power recovery scheme. One is the Cramer drive which can be used only for subsynchronous speed. Another is Serbius drive which is used for both subsynchronous and supersynchronous speed. Here in static Serbius drive slip power can flow in either direction. It is a constant torque drive and speed control below and above synchronous speed is possible and both motoring and regeneration is also possible. If you like the video, do subscribe to Read Electric Vehicle channel. Thank you.